Former Congressman Dr. Ron Paul uh, joins us here for the next 15 minutes, and I've got a lot of questions uh, for him. Up on Infowars.com, we have the headline, Ron Paul, dollar will collapse, gold will go to infinity. He said that yesterday on CNBC. I'd like him to repeat uh, what he talked about and then expound on why he says we're going that direction. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. Good to be with you. Well, you know, on, on the gold, something I've thought about for a long time, I did qualify that to a degree because when they ask you on the air on a business station about investments, uh, I don't get involved in that. And they wanted to know what gold was going to be at the end of the year, and of course I refused to say. But I said on long term, uh, all paper currencies, you know, self-destruct. That means gold could go to infinity, and this would be very destructive. So uh, that will come uh, if we continue to do these policies, and I see no possibility at the moment of changing our policies. So the demand for spending and the demand for deficits are such that they will keep printing the money. Even today when uh, the Fed has an announcement, he's not going to say, oh, we're going to quit inflating. The question is, are we going to inflate $85 billion a month or $80 billion a month? So that is the course of uh, looking for destruction of the dollar. And uh, in many ways, uh, they've accomplished a whole lot since uh, 100 years ago. The dollar of 1913 is worth about two or three cents. So although it's been doing it steadily and gradually and it hasn't been catastrophic, uh, we've had a lot of catastrophic events in the meantime, like Great Depressions, financing war, big inflation, and all these other problems. So um, I, I don't think it looks good for the dollar. Uh, if the if gold does end up going, uh, you know, uh, into infinity where it has no dollar price, it's very very bad news. And people who hold gold think, oh, that's great news, but it really isn't. It's a bad political event. Uh, that means the country and the whole world will be in in great danger, and it's the kind of thing that we would like to avert. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we have a graph from two thousand. Uh, from 1913 right through 2011, and you can see the dollar's lost over 97% of its value. And so it's already really collapsed. It's just that we've grown up during its collapse, but, but now there's not much value left. I'm seeing real inflation everywhere, but they seem to spin it on the news and say that inflation is low. What do you think about the uh, official inflation numbers? Well, I, don't, I don't believe them. Whether they say less than 2%, 1% inflation, but then if you go and look at certain things that are pretty important, like medical care costs right now are skyrocketing, and uh, bond prices are in a bubble. So in, in the various categories, there's a tremendous amount of inflation. But uh, this was another thing that came up yesterday on the show is the definition of inflation. They generally say, what's well, the CPI? Well, the government gives us statistics. They alter it. They, uh, they, they don't tell us the truth about the prices. Uh, and, like, housing prices are going up very rapidly now, but the CPA, CPI doesn't reflect that. So I think about the money supply. If the money supply is going up, you have a lot of inflation. Many times it will raise prices, but that is secondary to the biggest harm it does because it makes interest rates lower than they should be, so everybody's getting false information. I think we're back into an inflationary bubble in housing right now because lots of activity right now because interest rates are way too low. They're not market. And uh, therefore, you, you have this excessive debt accumulation, malinvestment, and for the most part, rising prices too. But if, if you look at only the CPI, people are very much misled. What you have to think about is the cost of living of the average person in the middle class. And, you know, free market economics shows us that, uh, you know, if you destroy a currency, you do destroy the middle class. The freer the market is and the sounder the money the larger the middle class. And we have been pretty good compared to so many other countries. We were always bragging about the largest, wealthiest middle class ever. But that's not the case anymore. So I think we're even vulnerable to some of the things like going on in third world nations in Brazil right now. Sure. Some people are doing quite well, but there's another large number of people not doing well. And we have a lot of people unemployed and on food stamps. And sure. Productivity's done, so we're we're looking for trouble ourselves. Uh, even like what we're witnessing on the te television in these uh, these third world countries, we could turn our country into a third world country if we're not careful. Well, uh, absolutely. If you look at the billions of bullets, the armored vehicles, the FBI director today admitting domestic drone operations, 
the government is preparing for war with the American people. And, and you see governments all over the world in this world uh, inflationary uh, spike uh, moving to suppress their populations. Can you speak to why you think uh, there's such a homeland security buildup against the American people? Or do you... I, I do think they, uh, they, they prepare. You know, it's amazing how they look at these things differently. The government of Turkey was sympathetic to the rebels in Syria and probably with a little bit of pressure from us, they were helping, you know, the rebels, including the Al-Qaeda. At the same time, you know, oh, it couldn't happen there. Now there's a rebellion going on in Turkey that people are demonstrating, oh, well, you guys now are the bad guys. So think of many countries we have helped support the rebels, even though it's on again, off again. One time we're supporting a group, then we're against them. But we, we generally support all this overthrow. But what if there are demonstrations on our streets? I mean, it's just like in Turkey. They're cracking down and say, well, you guys are really the bad guys. The rebels in, in sure. Syria, they're good guys. But when it comes here, there will be no soft touch. They're, they're going to be very, very tough. And uh, they might not say that we know it's coming or they're planning it, but it's a contingency. And sure. they are prepared to think that if, uh, if enough people get annoyed enough to start demonstrating. And I know there's a lot of people very angry because there is, there is this uh, division of, of wealth right now. The, the rich get richer. And those influence, uh, they have influence in government and, and, and laws and part of the Federal Reserve System, they do quite well. But the number of people who are suffering are growing, and I think that will probably continue. Absolutely. It's the cronyism, the opposite of free market. And then the media, the dinosaur media is trying to scapegoat the free market when we have the opposite of that. Since you raised this, your son, uh, Senator uh, Rand Paul, came out two weeks ago and said, why are we funding al-Qaeda? Uh, in Syria, I said that two years ago because it was in the foreign press and I was the conspiracy guy. Now it's all over the news that the main force, around 60% of them, are real Al-Qaeda chanting, we're going to blow up America again. And, you know, my point is, when I say inside job, the media spends it. I mean, why does the military industrial complex create Al-Qaeda, create the Taliban, fund them? Now they're funding this group. And then when they attack us again, they'll take my rights, your grandchildren's rights away. I mean, how? How outrageous is this that the TSA wants to stick their hands down our pants, Dr. Paul, but then, uh, meanwhile, our government's funding al-Qaeda? Well, they do it, and, um, and of course, there's a lot of money involved. The military-industrial complex uh, is very much involved, but there's a lot of ignorance involved, too. Uh, the the Al Qaeda, you know, if they were serious about this, uh, they'd ask a question: Why do so many people want to attack us? They never ask that. They just say we have to have this global war on terrorism is forever, and what we have to do, it, we have to stop it. But how do they stop it by taking away our freedoms? We send kids overseas to fight wars that are unconstitutional to save our constitution, and uh, also to protect our freedoms. And here at home, they're doing exactly the opposite. But they never ask the question about why, why, and what's the incentive, what's the motive? Uh, and of course, the motive is quite a bit different than they pretend. They, the motive for, for them is always, well, there's just a bunch of bad guys out there, and they hate us, and, and we're rich and free, and they hate our freedom, and I don't buy into that. I think they're sick and tired of us being in their country, occupying their country, and overthrowing governments all the time. Sure. And switching, switching uh, allegiance, and uh, they finally get tired of it, and uh, that's why we end up with this mess. Congressman Ron Paul, former congressman, Dr. Paul is our guest. Uh, can't wait to get you on in September when you launch The Amazing, as I've seen some advanced copies of it, uh, online and uh, physical uh, homeschooling uh, curricula that's just a revolution um, against this tyranny. But uh, the two points, uh, final points I want to get into with you here obviously is the NSA. You criticized the NSA back in 1984 uh, on the House floor. We've played the clip here and said it's going to end up being Big Brother and pointed out what they were doing. Told the story of the ice cream cone. The kid goes into Baskin Robbins and tells his birthday to get the free ice cream cone and it ends up in a government database. Now it's all out in the open. You've got private companies using it for unfair trade advantage. That's really what it's all about from my research. Uh, and do we deserve an apology now? You and I and others, libertarians, uh, Lou Rockwell, being, being called conspiracy theorist, warning of the NSA. I mean, everything we've talked about is now coming out, A, 
Do we deserve an apology? B, what does it signify to the awakening, though, that so much has now come out and Congress has a 10 percent approval rating and mainstream media is dying? Well, we might deserve it, but we better not hold our breath and expect <laughs> it. But, you know, I would be quite satisfied with them just changing policy and the American people would wake up. I don't even care who gets the credit. But if the American people wake up and then agree with us and say, hey, maybe there is something to this, they've gone too far and uh, there's a limit. But I'm still annoyed by the people saying that we, and there's so many, and even the conservative, both the conservative and liberal TV stations say, but I want to be safe. They are going to attack us. There will be 9-11. I have to give up some of my privacy. It's that kind of stuff that is bad. People are getting annoyed, but not enough to look at it on basis on a principle like the uh, Fourth Amendment. I mean, this this is what they have to do. So I, I think that uh, under today's conditions, we can expect things to maybe move in our directions, but I'm not holding my breath for them to actually apologize to us. I played this before you came on, but uh, the entire Miss USA contest, uh, I watched a bunch of their responses. They asked about the NSA and things, and Miss Alabama, all of them that I saw, said, I want you to listen to my phone to be safe. What would you say to Miss Alabama? I mean, she doesn't know government's always the big threat. What about being safe from government? Yeah, they, they have to come around to the belief of the majority of American people now that our government doesn't, uh, you know, tell us our tell us truth. But if they want to be safe, do they want to be safe from uh, uh, wife beating and everything else? They uh, Governments could make us perfectly slave, safe if we're perfect slaves. You know, if you become a slave, they might feed us well, but we have no liberties left. But we would be safe and uh, from outsiders, but we wouldn't be safe from our own government or our slave owners. And uh, yes, if that's what they want, if they're willing to give it up, they don't have enough respect nor understanding. They think that's the only only responsibility of government, but they never even talk about safety in the Constitution. The president and the Congress uh, are supposed to protect our liberties. We're supposed to worry about our safety and security and how we provide for our families. But uh, this whole thing, obsession with safety, but the founders understood this issue so clearly, and Franklin and others would say, you know, if you do, you're going to end up with uh, neither safety uh, nor, uh, you know, uh, freedom. Yeah, you don't get, you don't uh, you get. your freedom, you cannot give up. Uh, uh, you cannot give up any of it for the idea that people are going to take care of us either physically or economically. Sure, you never get safety when you create a big, giant government. You get tyranny. A final question. Uh, I agree with you that I don't like the whole Border Patrol thing because they only use it to keep Americans from getting out. That's now admitted. Uh, they used illegals to build part of the border fence that was just a boondoggle for rich guys because it had, like, a uh, spots in it for the game to go through and things so it was you know literally a white elephant but if you get 15 20 30 million illegals 46 million in the next decade here they get to have their babies free they get welfare and most of them vote to take my guns and are basically clients of the government because the government's there from the day they get here not like immigrants in the past that came here to work some of them do i i believe in immigration i believe that we need people to you know add you know new ideas and blood to this country but but at the same time i'm really concerned about this amnesty bill what's your take on it and uh rand has said that well if it's a good bill, he would support it because Obama's already done uh, legalization by fiat, which I understand. But can you give us your take on it and then give us your take on what Senator Paul's well, saying? Well, I, I'm not for amnesty, that is, giving them citizenship. Um, but I also think that uh, we could change things where workers coming back and forth would be a lot easier and that they wouldn't have to be criminals. But there's there's two things. I don't think automatic citizenship or amnesty or our birthright citizenship, but the big thing is no welfare. See I don't want to I don't want somebody to come in here illegally be able to get free medical care and free education uh, at, at the same at the same time they uh, have the right to vote. No, I don't. I, I don't want that. So I don't want the amnesty. But I also don't like the idea that uh, we have barbed wire fences and we have machine guns and get so. So what do we do? What would you do? What's constitutional? Because you know, there's all these reasonable reasons to do this. But when you look at the bill, it's like Obamacare. It's an open blank check. Yeah, but you know the portion 
that I've been talking about the most and Campaign for Liberty has been talking about has been the national ID card. See, a lot of conservatives who want the uh, illegals kept out are going along with this biometric national yes. database. It'll be so selectively enforced. Way too much. And it probably won't work. It's going to only work against the, it's sort of like guns. It'll work against the American exactly. people. Exactly. We'll all have to carry the card, but the illegals won't necessarily have to have it. Sure, you if know, you were so in the house still. Solution all. But that's what I think the biggest danger sure. of that particular um, bill. And of course, if there's amnesty where they get voting rights and, con and constant welfare, uh, that's not a benefit to any of us. Would you vote this current bill up or down? Well, from what I know about it, I wouldn't have any interest at all to vote for it. All right, that's that's powerful. Former Congressman Ron Paul, uh, we're very proud of the work you're doing, and we appreciate you. I know you've got a lot of sites. From uh, What is the best site for us to visit all things Ron Paul? Actually, I've been using, I'm going to have a new website that I'll use more if, in, the, in the near future. But, you know, going to my homepage, I keep up with a lot of my activities on my on my Facebook page. That would be a good place to go right now. Okay, so go to your official Facebook uh, page. Yeah, Ron Paul on the Facebook. All right, well, uh, former Congressman Ron Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us. Okay, thank you. Bye. Uh, there he goes. Well, that is an important interview. Uh, again, I love Rand. I have known Rand Paul, I mean, not super well. I mean, I interviewed him probably 15 times. I've uh, been at a few events he was at, interviewed him when he was running for Senate here. I mean, I remember back when he would campaign for his dad, his dad would always come on about once a month, but when his dad was first running for Congress, they'd say, hey, can you get Rand on? Uh, because, you know, we're really doing a push. And so I get Rand on to raise money and, and, and promote Ron Paul. I mean, I, I, I know Rand well, and I know he's a good guy. Uh, I've talked to him privately and stuff, but, but, but I mean, I just think this the amnesty bill is unfair, unconstitutional, and dangerous, and I agree with his dad. I would vote it down, and Rand's talking about voting for it. And I hope he's just playing politics. Because he's done that on some things, uh, but um, I, 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 there you go. I mean, his dad would right now the way this is voted down, and that's why I love Ron Paul. He just does what's right, what's constitutional, what's fair. Doesn't play politics. We'll be right back. Stay with us.